Hey there, it's Dan over at Loxo with a quick overview of the process of creating and sending forms in Loxo. In terms of the content we're going to go over in this video, first I'm going to show you the easy process of creating a form template in Loxo. Then we'll talk about how to add or attach a form to a person's profile page in Loxo. Then we'll talk about how you can send a form to a candidate or a contact to fill out. And then we'll talk about how you can share a completed form with a client at that point. And then we'll go over some frequently asked questions with regard to forms in Loxo. And finally, we'll talk about how to reach us over at support if you get stuck or if you need some best practice advice as you're creating or using forms in Loxo. Okay, so let's jump into the user interface and let's talk first about creating forms in Loxo. That you do on the settings page. So when you're logged in, begin by going to the gear icon up here at the upper right, click on that and choose settings. On the settings page, on the left-hand column, go to form templates. You'll see a list if you've created any previously of all the forms that you've created previously. In this case, we're using a demo account here today. So I've got a sort of generic candidate intake form that I have created as well as a job order form and one that I just created a couple minutes ago that I'm calling Dan's interview form. So the idea is you can create as many forms as you like by using the add button up here at the upper right. Let's take a look at the ones that we've added here in this demo account. So here's a typical candidate in take form. When you create the form template, at the upper left, you'll have a space where you can enter in the name of the form that you're creating, in this case, candidate intake form. And then as you build the form with all the questions you want to ask and get the answers to, you'll be provided a choice where it says here, new question type. Really what that's talking about is the answer field type. That's what I would lobby to call that there. So you'll see a drop down here and you've got several choices as you add questions onto your form. The answer could be in the form of a simple text, like just typing a couple words in the answer field, or you might want to have an answer field that's more like a paragraph where you could type in or the candidate could type in or the contact could type in a longer answer with a couple of a couple of sentences at least. Right. And then you could also have an answer field that would reflect a single choice from a range of options. So maybe the question has five different possible answers and you're asking the recipient to pick one answer amongst the choices. Now you could also have a question on the form that would allow them to choose multiple answers amongst a range of options. So maybe you have six potential answers and you're saying amongst these six different choices, which of these apply to you? Which of these skills do you have kind of thing, right? So you could choose multiple answers. And finally, you can also add an answer field that is a record field. Now what that means is whatever the candidate or or contact types in that field, it will automatically record that answer into the appropriate field in Loxo on the person's profile page. So it transfers the information that they've typed in or you've typed in, if that's the case, into the appropriate field. Okay, so you can see a bunch of different questions I've got here on the candidate intake form, like the person's first name, the initial phone call date, you would type that in if you're doing the interview, the candidate type, uh, their views or feelings about commuting, their current employer, if they're not currently working, who was their previous employer, and the date of their resignation, uh, an idea about what their ideal role would be uh, from the candidate's perspective, what their top three important job attributes are, um, their salary uh, requirements, and other companies that the candidate is interviewing with right now. So, you know, typical kinds of questions we typically see on a candidate intake form, right? So, and down here at the lower left, whenever you add a form, you'll have the option of sharing this form with your team so that when other people are logged in, they will see the form in their list of templates and be able to use that as well. So now let's go through the process of creating one of these forms. So now that I've showed you what one looks like, so click on the blue add button. And this is what it's going to look like to start with. So begin by giving a name to your form. So we'll just call this test form two. Okay, so that's the name of the form we're creating. Now, uh, you'll have the option of sharing it with your team or not. So make that decision, yes or no. And now we're going to begin by adding 
a question. So new question type, let's say the first one's gonna be a simple text answer. So I'll choose that from the, the options here in terms of, again, think of these as answer field types, really is what this is. So text, hit the add button here, this little blue add button to add the question. Okay, or the answer field more appropriately. Now, where it says edit, this is where you type actually the question or what exactly the first um, field is gonna be in this form. So let's say it's just gonna be the name of the person. I type in name and hit enter. So that's what the first question or field is on this form now. And this is where you or the candidate or the contact would type in the answer where it says answer placeholder. Now to the left here, you got this little, looks like a triple hamburger button. This is where you're gonna be able to rearrange the order or the sequence of the questions as you build the form. So don't worry about it here for now because we just have one question. But let's add a second question. Now let's say this one is gonna be a paragraph field. We want a little bigger answer field for this question. So we hit add now to add that question. And you can see the answer placeholder field is a little bit bigger, right? The first one's just like a simple text field. This one's a little bit bigger so you can type more. So let's say this is something like, uh, how did you hear about us? How did you hear about the job? Okay, so first question is the name of the candidate, John Smith. Second, hey John, how'd you hear about this job? How'd you hear about this opening? How, you know, we saw that you reached out to us about the job. How did you hear about it? Well, I heard about it from my friend who works at Acme, you know, et cetera. You type in the answer here. Okay, so now we have the two questions. Because we have more than one question now, we can use this triple hamburger button. If I wanted to, I could drag this question and make it the first one. Hey, so tell me first, how did you hear about this job? Okay, and your full name again, you know, this kind of thing. So you can rearrange the sequence of the questions after you start to add multiple questions. All right, so let's keep going. Let's say the first, third one is gonna be a single choice answer question. So I choose single choice, add, and let's just say this is gonna be something like um, your work status. Okay. Um, and so where it says add option, this is gonna be where you're starting to add the various possible answers. So maybe this one is, um, uh, legal to work in the U.S. Uh, second, something visa status. You know, you get the idea here. Where you're going to be basically adding, adding the various uh, possible answers that would be when you ask John Smith. Hey, John, can you tell me what's your work current work status? Are you legal to work here in the United States? Uh, you know, etc. So use the add option button here to continue to add the possible answers. Um, no, but I will be soon, you know, or whatever, you know, you get the idea here. So under work status, there might be several different possible answers. And on this one, you're asking them to give you the one correct answer amongst a range of possible answers here. Okay, so then let's repeat the process up here at the top. Let's say for new question type, we want a multiple choice answer, i.e. Uh, multiple possible answers. So multiple choice, add, and then just keep repeating the process here. So again, we'll just say something like um, um, cities, or no, something like that. Let's say it's skill set, right? Skills that you have, skills you have. And then use the add option button here. So maybe you're interviewing a software engineer and you want to know if they have coding skills, etc. cetera. Yeah, add an option for C++ or something or other. You get the idea. So the idea is as you're building this multiple answer option question, you put the question in here, you keep adding options and the person who's answering theoretically could choose more than one answer here to indicate you know, a range of skills, and they've got several of these, but not all of these. Okay, so again, under new question type, you could also choose the record field. So this again is a field that will allow you to um, basically anything that they answer in this field or you record in this field, if you're writing the answers for them, will automatically populate, auto-populate the answer into the appropriate field over on the profile page. So here, you don't need to actually put in, uh, type in the name of the field here, because when you choose the record field, it's gonna give you a dropdown of all of the fields on a person's profile page. So let's say here that you're looking to document their location. So choose the location field here, and you can see it auto-populates the name, location. 
And so whatever they type in this field for their location, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or New York, Brooklyn, New York, or whatever, it'll automatically populate that in the location field on the profile page for this person. Okay, so you would repeat the process to add additional record fields. Just hit the uh, add button after you've chosen record field and then keep repeating the process. So maybe in addition to location, we want to document their current company, right? So company. And uh, so when you type in the current company that they work for or when they type it in, it'll auto populate that on the profile page. And again, you can continue to use these uh, triple hamburger buttons to the left to rearrange the sequence of the questions until you got it perfect, right? So keep using the blue add button up here and keep telling us each time you add a question, what type of an answer field are you looking for? And then when you're done, make sure that you've decided whether you're gonna share this form with your team or not, and then simply hit save. And that will save that new form into your list here. And here we've got test form two that we've just created. So pretty easy to put the form together. Let us know at support if you get stuck on that part. Now let's talk about attaching or adding a form to a particular person's profile page. So let's go to the people tab. And I'm gonna click on whoever comes up here first, Juan Sebastian Angarita, to open up his profile page or his flyover page as we call it, as you know. And so over here on the right-hand column of the profile page, next to the campaign add button is a three dot button, the more button here in the right-hand column. And when you click on that, you can use the add form button here to attach or add a particular form onto this particular person's profile. So when I choose add form, it's gonna ask me which one? You've got four form templates, Dan, the candidate intake form, Dan's interview form, the job order form, and test form two. Which one do you want to attach to this profile? So if I choose test form two or Dan's interview form, it immediately launches that form. So if I'm chatting with Juan on the phone, he's telling me, I can type in here, Juan Sebastian Angarita. Hey Juan, why are you interested in this gig? Why did you reach out to us? Why did you apply? Well, to tell you the truth, you know, whatever I want to say. And then I can ask him about his work status, his skill set, his location, his current company, his desired compensation level, whatever I want to ask him, right? And then click submit. And that would basically record those answers and record that form, save that form onto his profile over here. Alternately, at the lower left, as I'm taking the answers, uh, after I'm done, I can save it as a PDF and save that uh, or send that over to a client, let's say. Okay, so very easy to attach the form. And as you scroll down on the right hand side here as well, I want to show you in the right hand column, you'll see the forms that have been saved previously. In this case, a candidate intake form with his answers and a VP of sales specific series of questions, you know, when he was applying for that particular job. You have the add forms button here as well. So you have the same option of adding the form here and doing the exact same process here. So pretty easy uh, to attach the form uh, to the a profile page as you record the information. All right, now let's talk next about sending a form to a candidate or a contact to fill out. So that you do when you're creating an email because we have form merge tags that you can drop into the email. So it will give them a link to click on to open up that form and fill out that form and send it back to you. So to do that, let's go to the upper right here on the right hand column and let's send a quick email to Juan Sebastian here. So I'll choose the email and it opens up a typical email template. So the key concept is when you're creating the, the body of the email that you're sending to the candidate, let's say, you're going to want to use the person merge tags to drop in like their first name. Hey, Juan, I got this great job I want to tell you about. And here is the link to fill out the form. So use the form merge tag drop down here and choose the form that you would like to insert or put a link into the body of this email. And that will essentially insert that link into the body of this email. So when they receive that email, they'll see a link they can click on, which will allow them to open up that form, complete the fields, and then save it. And when the recipient uses that link in the form to complete the form, uh, the whoever sent that form to the recipient is going to receive a notification email letting them know that the recipient, the candidate or the contact has completed the form so that you're on the same page after they're done uh, completing that form. So now keep in mind that if you used any record field questions in the form that you're embedding into this email uh, that you're sending to the person, uh, their answers will automatically populate in the appropriate fields on the profile. 
when they're done filling out that form, which is really a fabulous tool. All right, so that's how easy it is to send out uh, a form to a candidate or a contact to complete. Let's talk next about how to share a completed form with a client. Okay, so if we scroll down here on the right-hand side, remember we have a list of the forms that have been completed and filled out with regard to this person. In this case, a candidate intake form and a VP of sales form. So if I click on one of those to open them up, here you can see this is just a test, so there's a bunch of gibberish that we've typed in here. But let's say that this has been a completed form. We're satisfied with the answers here. At this point, you can hit the print button down here at the lower left, and you will have an option at this point at the upper right to choose the destination or set the destination to save this form, this completed form, as a PDF onto your computer. Now, alternately, you could save it to your Google Drive, you could send it to a printer, etc. But for the purposes of forwarding it, this completed form to a client, let's say, your best bet is going to be to save it as a PDF, okay? And then simply hit save, and that will save that form as a PDF onto your computer. And then at that point, you'll be able to essentially email that completed form to the client uh, as you normally would e email a PDF to anybody at that point. So that's essentially the quick way that you can send a completed form to a, uh, a client, which is something that I know a lot of our users have really craved. And we've gotten that feature request over and over and over, uh, over the months. And so I know that's going to delight a lot of our users, the ability to not only create forms very quickly, but to send those and forward those on to clients very easily. Now, in terms of some frequently asked questions with regard to forms, one we get all the time is, who exactly can delete a form template after it's been created in Loxo? Well, basically, only the creator of the template itself can, can delete that form template. Second question we get frequently is, who can view my form template that I've created? Well, if you check the box that said that you're going to share it with your team members when you were creating that template, then everyone on your team will be able to see and access and use that form. But if you didn't share it with your team, then only you would be able to view it and access it. Third question we get all the time, who can edit a form template after it's been created? Only the creator, unless the form was shared with the team. So basically the same answer as above. And finally, the fourth question we frequently get, who can delete a filled out form from a person's profile? So after the form has been completed, whether by the candidate or you as the interviewer, and it's been saved onto the profile, what if we want to delete that? Who can delete that? Only an admin on your account will be able to delete that completed form from the person's profile going forward. So those four questions are the most frequently asked questions that we're getting so far at least with regard to forms and sending forms. But finally, if you do have questions or if you need some help as you're creating forms or with regard to anything we've been talking about in this quick training, don't be shy reaching out to us at support down here at the lower right. You can always start chatting with us. Our support team is excellent as I'm sure you know. So if you have simple questions about forms or if you need some best practice advice as you are creating your forms or if you have any hiccups along the way, don't be shy reaching out to us at support. Alternately, you can always email us. It's simply support at loxo.co. And with that, I'm going to thank you again for watching this quick training video. Bye-bye for now.